Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to build this modern, clean e-learning app interface using Jetpack Compose. Before we jump into the code, let's break down exactly what we are looking at on the screen. Starting from the top, we have a classic header section. It features a profile picture and a personalized greeting, aligned in a simple row. Below that, we have a bold title text that asks, What would you like to learn today? Now look at the center. This is the main interaction area. We have a grid of four colorful category cards, Developing, Designing, AI, and Explore. Notice how each card has a unique background color, rounded corners, and a specific icon. In our code, we will handle this by creating a reusable composable. Moving down, we see a Popular Courses section. This banner is interesting. It has a gradient background and an image that sits on the right side. To achieve this overlap and precise positioning, we will be using a constraint layout inside a card. And finally, take a look at the bottom navigation. This is the tricky part. We have a bottom bar with four menu items, but notice the floating action button, the shopping cart, right in the middle. It's docked inside the bar with a cutout shape. To build this, we need to configure the scaffold component correctly. So here is the plan. Instead of writing every single line from scratch, I have written a detailed prompt describing this exact layout. I fed that prompt into Gemini 3, and it generated the code for us. <laughs> In the next step, we will analyze that prompt and the resulting code together. By the way, if you don't feel like typing the prompt yourself, or if you want direct access to the full source code of this project, Make sure to hit the Join button and become a member of the channel. Members get instant access to all project assets. Now let's get started. Just a quick note before we start. I am using the latest Android Studio Otter 2 feature drop, version 2025.2.2. .2. So your interface might look slightly different if you are on an older version. <laughs> let's close this and click on New Project. In the Templates window, make sure to select Empty Activity under the Phone and Tablet tab. In modern Android Studio versions, this template is fully configured for Jetpack Compose by default. So, select it and hit Next. Here we set up our project details. I'll name it My Application. You can verify your package name and save location here. For the minimum SDK, I'm sticking with API 24 to ensure broad compatibility. Leave the build configuration on Kotlin DSL, and finally, click Finish. Now that the project is initialized, we need to add a few libraries to handle our specific UI requirements. Go ahead and expand Gradle Scripts and open the build.gradle.kts file for the app module. Scroll down to the Dependencies block. We need to add Compose Foundation, Material, Constraint Layout, and Navigation. I'm using specific versions here like 1.10.0 for Material and 2.9.6 for Navigation. Just a heads up, these are the latest stable versions at the time of recording. When you are watching this, newer versions might be available, so feel free to update them if Android Studio suggests it. Once you have added these lines, look for the Sync Now button at the top right corner. Click it and let Gradle download the necessary files. Before we generate the UI code, let's import the necessary assets so we don't get any missing resource errors later. <laughs> I have a folder here prepared with all the icons and images organized by screen density. I'm going to copy all these density-specific folders. Just a quick note, while the full project source code is exclusive to channel members, this asset pack is completely free for everyone. You can find the download link in the description below. I'll right-click on the res folder and paste them here. This will automatically merge our new images into the correct drawable directories. And just like that, our assets are ready. All right, let's grab the prompt. I've written down every detail here from the color codes to the layout structure. I'll select all of this, copy it, and switch over to Gemini. 
Now let's paste it in and watch the AI do the heavy lifting. I'm asking for a single file solution using Jetpack Compose and Material 2. And there we go. <laughs> it generated the full activity code, including our custom bottom bar and the grid. Let's hit that copy button right here. Back in Android Studio, select everything in main activity and paste. Perfect. Since we already imported the images, there are no red errors. We are ready to run. The moment of truth. Let's hit that green run button. Gradle is building the project, installing, and launching. And here it is! Look at that! The app is running smoothly on the emulator. First off, notice the scrolling behavior. It feels completely native and fluid. Let's look at the details. That popular courses banner. It rendered perfectly with the gradient background we asked for. The constraint layout placed the image exactly where it should be. Now try clicking the bottom menu items. See that toast message? Home clicked. Profile clicked. The interaction logic is fully functional. But my favorite part is this floating action button. Look at how it sits inside the cutout of the bottom bar. That docked effect is strictly specific to the scaffold component configuration. It gives the app such a premium feel. Let's walk through the source code to understand exactly how this is built. We start with two simple data classes, category item and bottom minging to hold our data. Also, inside onCreate, notice windowcompat.setDecor fits system windows. Passing false here allows our app to draw behind the status bar for that modern edge to edge look. Next is the My UI composable. The backbone here is the scaffold. This is crucial. We set is floating acceptor docked to true. <laughs> this tells the scaffold to prepare a cutout in the bottom bar. We then define the fab itself right here, giving it that nice reddish orange color. Inside the scaffold, we use a column for the main content. Two modifiers are key here. First, padding, padding, fadual values ensures our content isn't covered by the bottom bar. Second, vertical scroll makes the entire screen scrollable. Inside, we simply stack our header, grid, and banner components. Scrolling down to use a row for alignment. Look at the image modifier, clip circle shape. This instantly transforms a square image into a perfect circle. Below that, greeting title is just a standard text with increased font size and bold weight for hierarchy. Now the category grid. Since we are inside a scrollable column, we avoid using a lazy grid. Instead, we use a smart Kotlin function called chunked. This splits our list into pairs. We then loop through these pairs and place them in a row. This creates a manual two-column grid that scrolls perfectly with the rest of the page. Each item in that grid is rendered by this category card composable. It's a simple card with rounded corners and the specific background color from our data class. Inside, we center the icon and text using a column with arrangement center. For the promo banner, we wanted a premium look. We applied a brush-axis gradient to the background box. Inside, we used constraint layout. This is powerful. It allows us to anchor the text to the start and the image to the end, preventing any overlap issues on smaller screens. Finally, the My Bottom Bar. Here is the trick for the gap. Look at our list. The third item is null. In our loop, we check. If the item is null, we insert a spacer with weight. This creates the invisible space where our floating action button sits. Otherwise, we render a standard bottom navigation item. It's a complete professional UI. <laughs> if you want to save time and get this code ready to use, join the channel membership. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.